Agora sim. Que bom que a gente não faz microfones, né? I'm glad we don't produce microphones. So good morning everyone and welcome to this special morning for all of us. It is a joy for us to be here. First of all, I would like to greet all of you present here and everyone that is following us live. We are streaming in Portuguese and English to all the world. And it is a joy to be here at Kubo. Kubo is a special place for us at Suzano. We are one of the key sponsors of our Agri Vertical and we have a space in this floor. So I'd like to thank everyone at Kubo that opened the doors and help us grow in this innovation world. This morning I left home and I collect some magnets for the fridge and have one special one that says kids make us stay young, but first of all, they make us get old. But I don't agree much with that because they don't make us age, they make us mature. And I have the privilege of having four children in, varied, in different ages. I know I went too far. But I learned from them that uh, living with them makes me better, makes me open my mind, challenge myself, and know things I wouldn't do, like I'm trying to play League of Legends. I know it's a video game of 20 years ago, but I'm taking this process with my 17-year-old son. And that's why we need to be with younger people. And that's why Suzano, a company who is 98 years old, is, considers itself a startup of 98 years old. So first of all, I'd like to introduce, present to you this 98-year-old innovation startup. Suzano produces renewable source products in large scale, boosted by innovation. For almost 100 years, it's driven by pioneerism, change and renovation. That is how it developed the pulp based on the eucalyptus um, fiber and is now a global leader and has diversified the market, built its own forestry base and factories, expanded their lines of paper and packages and created the unit of consumption goods and also invests on new business and new applications of the eucalyptus biomass. All of that combining innovation with sustainability, what we call innovability. Suzano is basing its uh, business model in a continuous and uh, renewable cycle when everything starts in nature and produces things that will be part of the lives of 2 billion people. We have one of the largest banks of eucalyptus in the world and we rely on experts to develop bioproducts and sustainable solutions and more and more we broaden our outlook and gather joy, uh, our forces with the innovation ecosystem because the planet calls for urgency and innovation we believe that this is the right way of together reaching our purpose of renewing life from the trees. Suzano, seeding the future. This is Suzano, a 98-year-old startup. Uh, four years ago, Suzano invested around 5 million euros in a small startup, a startup of technology in Finland. This startup gets our fiber from our eucalyptus and transforms it into fabric. And it is a new solution for one of the biggest sustainability problems in the world, which is the application of a fossil or plastic re uh, waste in the textile industry. We believe that with this solution and so many others, we can bring 
new solutions to the world, and that's why Susano has invested in this company. This company, after four years, has its IPO, and it's now worth over 400 million euros, and it's going to worth more. I was there last week, and I brought this hood that is made with eucalyptus fiber of the Adidas brand. So I hope you enjoyed my look. It's super comfortable. I'm not going to let anyone touch it because it's kind of indiscreet, but it, that's why we're here, to do things like that in this size, to bring impact, not only for Suzano, but especially to the entrepreneurs that want to be a part and grow and develop their ideas with Susano. And by doing that in partnership, we can see the future and really make a better world for the next generations. That's why we are here. And to talk a little about how to do it and why this is important, I would like to call Luciana of White Red Habit. You see, I touched his hood. Everybody's going to get one at the end, right? No, I think no. But anyway, here's my phone. So, guys, I'm glad to see everyone here. I feel we are in a community and everyone is concerned about the same things. So, I just need the clicker. And I would like to say to everyone watching us, I would like to hear all of your feedback and let me introduce myself. I'm Luciana and I'm here to talk about how we can reimagine our vision of the future. I am co-founder of White Rabbit and what we do there is all the time think of this future perspective. We carry out studies, we generate scenarios and use some techniques and people ask us, you are always looking at the future, what is going to happen? And we have to let people down and say, we think about the future, but we think we look at the present. The research we carry out is about the future. We research for signals that are things that are happening now and that are emerging, that are new, and that are on the border of what is considered mainstream, because that's where you're going to have innovation. You're going to have environments like this, of people that are thinking about what is going to grow from now. So looking at the present from this perspective, that from the present we can have a, an idea of main character and consider what is our power of power. It's the now. Now we can do something. When we talk about what I'm going to say, just an overview of our climatic uh, literacy program. And when you talk about present in this program, there is a word that's key. Where are we at this in this context? We are in a context of acceleration. From the future scenario perspective, this is a macro perspective. Everybody on Earth knows that we are accelerating and we are in an obsession of acceleration. We think that acceleration is the only perspective of time that we have. So we are obsessed with that. So when we talk about climatic uh, literacy, where, how do we see acceleration? Some numbers that are didactic is the land overcharge day, overshoot day. That is the day where you calculate the resources of Earth that can be regener regenerated in one year and how long we spend it. In 81, we would spend it in December. Now, in 2022, we had an acceleration of that and we finish our resources in the world in July. So it's like we had a salary and in the 15th of the month we spend it all and we have 15 days to spend the next salary. If planet Earth had a CEO, it could be fired because there is no way of sustaining that. Any companies that waste their resources in the middle of the month, we have to stop and consider that is something wrong on the way we are structuring our ideas. And this day shows that. Another number that really places us in the present is this, the concentration of CO2 
two in the past 300 years, which is also a proof that nobody believes in graphs, because this graph is a proof of that. Anyone that is minimally literate in climatic literacy sees that since all gore. You see this graph, and if we believed in graphs, we would look at that and everybody would start running and screaming because this is causing despair. But now we look at that and say, oh, wow, it's accelerated, huh? Climate change, huh? And the same graph repeats when we talk about war, global war. And we talk about some natural barriers in, on Earth. This is a documentary in Netflix that talks about the land barriers, nine limits for the collapse and four were um, past, so we are not talking about present, we are talking about past. We have a past to repair because we are at a point we have overpassed our credit card limit and this is a reality. So we are here to talk about this reality, yes, because we know this acceleration is causing cli extreme climatic events in the world. So, if we had three years ago in our first study in White Rabbit and we presented it in an innovation festival called uh, Hacktown, and everybody said, oh, well, that's super good, you're talking about something in 2030 or 2040, and it was three years ago and it seemed like something so far, something our grandchildren would see, but it's not our grandchildren, it's us, it's our generation that will not have water in 20 years if we don't do anything now. So, this reality, let's just start screaming and running. No, but what we could do is how can we be realistic and be brave enough to face this reality? Because this is the reality, this is a broad scientific consensus. So, how to deal with the reality with being brave, but as Suasuna says, a hopeful realistic, because optimistic is naive and the pessimistic is really boring. So, what we want is to be a hopeful realistic, looking and seeing, I know what's happening, but I have hope and I'm going to act with the reality as an input for innovation. So what we want to do is look, uh, face the problems that the clima climatic issue brings us and generate solutions for business. This is the solution we want. We are going to talk about the problem, but from the perspective of the solution. Walter talks a lot about that, that we can't be a part of a problem only. We are all part of a problem as a system that needs change. But how can we be a part of the solution? to. And from this uh, perspective of being a hopeful, uh, realistic, we have to consider uh, these words that is a new paradigm, something everybody says. But what paradigm is that? Because paradigm is an old-fashioned word. It's heavy, isn't it? Because we are thinking about a mind model, the way we understand reality. And so I'm here to say that there is a new paradigm that we have researched for some years and has been very inspiring for this whole context. Because the first thing we have to ask ourselves is, do you think the way we react to the crisis isn't part of the crisis itself? Do you think the way we think and try to address things in industries, trying to mend things, are not part of the same inability to look on the long run? Because this is what the, what the climatic uh, issue tells us. It asks for this new way of thinking. Bio has the emergency network um, company, and uh, he's famous for saying that. Times are urgent. We need to deaccelerate. We need to be able to. Because if you want to create something new, how can we do it by doing things the way we always did? So then it's not innovation. So how can we get uh, rid of this trap? So this is a clue. This is the U theory, which is uh, used in the regeneration studies and was created in the. Uh, MIT, 
And there is a line of thinkers that use it, and the key aspect is the iceberg that tells us, with the metaphor of the iceberg, it shows that if we want to innovate, if we want to do something that is really impactful, we have to be radical. Radical in the literal meaning of the word, which means going to the root of something. This is the etymology of the word, going to the root. We can't just act on what is showing the events of the day by day. We have to go deeper in the creative source that changes the structures of thinking, the paradigms of business, so we can do something that is new, that belongs to the 21st century, in the, for the problems that we have today. So the iceberg metaphor helps us on that. So how can we access this creative source? And a clue is the idea of the separation of history. Charles Eisenstein, a very influential thinker in these new economic models, in circular economy and all that, has a book that for me is the most beautiful name of the book, which is called The Most Beautiful World Our Hearts feel it's possible. So I recommend this book and it says, it speaks a lot of this new thinking paradigm because we believe this world can exist, but we have a lock which is called the separation history. And this history sustains our uh, Western thinking that we are psychological bubbles, we are individuals that are not related to the whole, the whole has no meaning, nature has no intelligence, we are separate from nature, we are separate from each other, it's one to each own. And this history of separation is what sustains our business paradigm focused on competition and our exploration of nature because we believe for so many years that we are separate from nature. And uh, it, there is a author that says we are, it, we are separate from nature. Monitor is nature, but we have to consider like that. So if we talk about renewal from the tree, there is no separation. This is a model of thinking. This is the way we have organized our society in this contemporary age. But what do we see? We see that the separation history generated systems based on ego that hierarchize the ways of life, people, and in its nature, in its DNA, they are excluding. And when we think of a way of breaking this paradigm, we are going to think that from an egocentric system, we want equal ecocentric systems with this ecosystem idea. So this perspective has this image of the circle and we see the regeneration paradigm that comes with uh, Daniel Hall that is very influential in this idea that he says a homo uh, regenerative culture is healthy, resilient and adaptable, takes care of the planet of life with the conscience that is the most efficient way of creating a thriving future for whole humanity. And we are in a polarized moment with so many divisions. And when we look at that, this vision of regeneration, this is something that can generate unity. And who doesn't want a thriving future for everyone focused on life? So the perspective of regeneration, which is a movement in the world that has economists, business people, academic artists, people that see in this possibility, in this new way of uh, transcending the history of separation as a vision of futures. So we see that from the perspective of the linear economy, where the only economy matters, we are very poor in the systemic view of the impact of what we do, so we can generate um, societies that are polluting and that degenerative that created that debt in the credit card limits. So the hopeful uh, realistic has to look at that and see, okay, we have a bill to pay, but we are migrating to another model when you have a circular economy, not only in this theory, 
but with other ways of connecting. So we have a study of emerging narratives that show other economic values. The ESG movement has to do with that. The idea of including other success metrics to generate another and more systemic view of business in a circular idea. And based on that, we are going to get to models of life that are regenerative and we can have the rules of the ecosystem as a society that are symbiotic with value. Life, health have value and this health of the ecosystem has a value and this value is expressed in the way we do business. These movements, going back to how I presented, are movements from the present, it's not something we project for the future, it's something that is put, and I'm going to show you here some teasing, because later I'm going to make it available for you, three studies of climatic literacy, systemic view, and things that we work with Susano in the Reimagine program. I just want to make you curious and leave you this with more time. So this is this meeting point that we have for vision people in the entire world. It's not that it's ready, that's perfect. It's not that this is the solution. But yes, there is a good will of this movement of creating this from this logic of regeneration that we have life in the core of our decisions, individual and collective one, business, governance, so we can put the life as the core of our, our decisions. And what does it mean in the practice? In the practice, we that we work with innovation, thinking about future, I think that why, that's why the, we have a full house here. I'm sure this is going to be a historical day in the launching of Susano Ventures. This innovation environment, my personal opinion, I consider that the more vibrating regarding innovation nowadays, because we are talking now about solutions from threes, that we're talking about inspiring things that are new, technologies that you see later. I'm just giving you just a tasty. So things that are really new, that we are not used to, that we have never ever seen, the environment of innovation, entrepreneurs seeking bio solutions, if you're not in a human, living beings, so we are going to reduce or eliminate the impact in the environment, so the treatment of waste, the water, we had a study about water, water to me is the big issue when you talk about future, we cannot have a future if you don't have water, anything that's related of taking care of water directly or indirectly, we're talking about innovation, future, impact, and also about sustainable bio solutions. We're going to talk about bio products. I think that's amazing. We had here, imagine that we can have a fabric industry that there's no impact that we have for the fashion industry nowadays. This is one of the most intensive one regarding residues. See how amazing, it's not saying, oh, I'm not going to make clothes anymore. No, we need to have a new solution that's going to bring a new perspective to what we consider bioproducts. All of that in biomimetics, that's the discipline with different thinkers, scholars. I love to study biomimetic that we're going to make available for you. This is a study that we have done with Susano to understand what? Who can look this and being able to understand what are the inspirations in nature? Because for a million years, nature is evolving to solve collaboration problems. Can't we inspire in this intelligence for the collaboration problems that we want to understand nowadays? Decentralization, this is the big word for this 21st century. If there's something that we can learn with the forest, with the water, is decentralization. Because there's a great inspiration here for us to think about biomimetic and to think that Oh, that's beautiful, that's really nice, how nice, we're excited about the bio products and so on. But the bio investor, they want results, they want money, that's fine. When you're talking about the paradigm of bioeconomy, we are also talking about an economy that we can have a huge opportunity. Because what we want, this community of innovators, 
did with Brazil, with the ecosystem that we have, especially with Amazon, is going to pace the future of the world. So we here, we have this responsibility and this opportunity of making a new economy and what we can, but there are other values, other paradigms, and this data are quite distributed because you have successful cases. So that's why I would like to leave this to you, the three studies. You can put the QR code and you're going to have the climatic literacy. It's going to talk a little bit more uh, about f climate funding cases, successful cases. We have a lot of good things there. Systemic view, this study is going to talk about youth theory, how it happens. They will ask to us about the future of work, the systemic view. There are a lot of cases of what would be this company of the future. In Biomimetech that we bring here, the Susano's cases, it's amazing. The reimagine there was really great because Susano lives Biomimetech in the, its practice. We don't have a right answer or a perfect company, but there are the companies that want to start doing things, and that's why we are here today. So yes, we look to the present, but what I want to invite you is to have this look, that's the look of the hill. Have we ever climbed a hill, a mountain, and be there and have that experience? It's hard to explain when you have a broadened view. I'm not here with a limited view. I can look from above, from the mountain, and think, what is this future view from there, from the mountain, the top of the mountain? There are some clues that we have. We know this is an ecosystemic view. We know that it needs to be collaborative. That's not just being the individual in the competition that we're going to solve that. We know that's focused in solutions in the practice of innovation that's regenerative, that's fo focusing life, that there's a deep tech focus. We're going to see a little bit of this here. So the courage to be bold, to invest in technologies that we don't, we are not sure about that them, what are going to be, how it's going to be used, but we can look in our horizon and invest in technologies that are going to have other applications for, for some time. So that's the scientific discovery, the, the perspective of the deep tech. And with that, we are going to promote innovability. So a few things we already know, and we are here to think about that. So can we challenge this paradigm where we believed in the separation history, or I would take care of nature and I would be a hippie, I would live in a community, or I would work with technology here in Kubo with the startups, or I will have profit, or I will think just about my purpose. And what paradigm of regeneration gives to us is for and for the magic of and to work here with the bioproducts. You are working with the greatest technology that there is. And we are also working for nature. We are yeah trying to get profit, sustainability, companies that that are successful in the financial point of view, and I'm working with purpose. I will work with, with innovation in a creative environment, and I will regenerate the planet. So this is the invite that I have for you to think about the and instead of or. This is our call for action to think that climate change is the problem and that we need to look at. But what we are here is to change the system. This is what we are here to do and create together this. So I'd like to end with the saying of Walter that he says that or everyone is going to win or everyone is going to lose when we're talking about climate change. So let's everyone win. Let's as community think that we need to change the paradigm that's focused on the consume for one that's for the system. This is only going to happen if you have a change of the social pact, how people consume, how they see the things, how they can see the future by their own decisions. When you talk about emerging technologies, you would listen to the, the, the music in the vinyl. So how, when you stop using that, why well, you don't have the CD? When we have the CD, we change the way that we listen to music. Oh, but here I cannot storage the music. Uh, uh, the CD is not good. I'll stop using the CD when I have the iPod. It's a better alternative. I stop using the iPod when? When we have the streaming. 
So that's why we are here. We are here to create these alternatives for people so they can consume products that will be good for the planet. So we are not here to trash the CDs. We are here to create the streaming, to create this new culture that's a bioproduct culture, biosolution culture, and that makes a difference for life and the planet in this inclusion logic. When you choose paper packaging that's going to remove tons of plastic of the shelves and the sea, the nature applauds you. When you choose sustainable fabric that's going to replace the synthetic fiber that pollutes the planet, the nature vibrates. When you replace the plastic bags for paper bags, the nature sees that you are doing your what you need to do. All of that may seem just a drop in the ocean, but in each drop that we are going to change the world and see a better future. There is no bioeconomy without the bioconsumer. What you choose and buy changes the, the planet. So that's it. Let's see the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, and to continue now, Marcela, the Director of Communications, she's going to talk to some people to see how we can put this into practice. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to be here with you talking about important themes. Thank you, Lou. I like to listen to her and the people from White Rabbit because they help us to change and think about creativity, innovation, regeneration in the top of our agenda. So thank you. I hope that as I, I'm excited, I hope you are all excited and with new ideas after her lecture, we are happy to share with you these studies that we have as a partnership with White Rabbit. We are bringing to Suzano with more frequency these contents to help to have more information about this innovation ecosystem and to remind us that we are all part of the solution for all the challenges that we are facing. And it's quite important to keep this in mind. And the video that we have seen, it reminds us of that, of the role of each one, of being bioconsumers when we choose to buy a product during our days. So to talk about this, about being part of the solution and about the need to innovate the markets and to think about new models, I have the pleasure of inviting here André Castembao, that's the founder and CEO of the Post Ventures, that's one of the of invest, impact investing in Latin America, investing in companies besides the financial return for the shareholders also wants to solve the main problems of the society, the environmental one and the social ones with innovation technology. And I recently was elected as the top women investing in Latin by the Latin America Venture Capital Association. So thank you for being here. So let's go. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really happy with this initiative. It's related to my personal values and from the Positive Ventures too. Before talking about Positive Ventures, I want um, well, I'm influenced by the previous lecture, how we got to the Positive Ventures. Because I think this path of authenticity shows what you're doing here. So I think that I will start with a basic question, that is, in which planet do you want to live? I think that each one of us has a, mi a social mission and the act of consuming of where we decide to work and about investing, it relates to that. We have the responsibility, the urgent responsibility to collaborate to a more inclusive economy with an economy that respects the limits of the planet and a more regenerative one. And I have heard a while Fabio Barbosa saying that, do you know how much money do you have? What is your sponsoring with your money? One real can go to a positive impact or for the negative impact. We don't have one real in our wallet anymore. When it's invested, it's in the bank. 
anything that we are in a decisive decade that we cannot be omit we cannot omit anymore what's happening. We need to know which causes we are sponsoring. So when we decide to have an impact investment, we make this decision with awareness. And when Susan decides to get seventy million to causes that are related to bioeconomy, economy, it's doing this with consciousness and redirecting the view of the world that Luciana brought. And here, I think that's the framework that she was mentioning, that we are over this, we are over four of these risks that were mapped. And what we are talking now is the climate change. And also are these capital ones. I think that everyone here is aware of this, is engaged, but there are a lot of people that doesn't believe on that. And we can prove that the effects of the climate change they cost a lot, well, more than $160 billion per year. We are seeing now the Europe state with a lot of droughts, with the, it's inflating the stimuli for work, all the economy is suffering. But I'm also uh, optimistic, realistic. I think that we have a lot of positive influence, influence in our path. We have a new generation with the millennials that also want to consume with more awareness. They want to invest where to know where they are investing and this redirect the road and this capital. So the millennials are going to be the workforce. They are considered the biggest workforce and they are going to inherit uh, about $22 trillion. So this investment, our attitudes are going to have an exponential impact in the next decade. More than that, we have seen in the positive ventures investments how our companies were resilient during the crisis. We had a sad pandemic that influenced at different markets. But when we are talking about solutions as education, health, as recycling, what we are going to do with the trash, what we are going to do with our footprint, carbon footprint. So this is essential regardless of the crisis. Sometimes we stop consuming, we stop getting some consumer goods, but education, recycling, they are still there as a priority. So our portfolio was really resili resilient in this crisis. And besides that, we have a crisis. We see the SEC about the CVM that's not mandatory the companies to report the carbon footprint. I'm happy to see that the world is doing this. Now it's mandatory to mention your carbon footprint. So when you talk about venture capital, that's where I decided to make an impact. We're talking about long-term investments. When we talk about startups, we need to have time for these companies to become mature. And when we look at this future, we try to understand what are the trends. And I always say that this impact it's quite clear of what's going to be these micro trends, what are the leaders of the future, what are the potential markets. It's a lens that's going to bring clarity. So I'm seeing a lot of interesting opportunities when I talk about clean techs. To me, the brilliant minds in the road are looking to this type of investment. And I think with all this urgency scenario that looking at the problem, looking at the opportunity, looking to my personal values too, is where I decide to have the positive interest. As Marcelo mentioned, it's a venture cap capital fund that wants to invest in, th in things that we have an impact in your core. The product or service that these companies provide, they are trying to have a better world. So what are our criteria? Our criteria are the ones of any other venture capital, capital uh, regarding impact or not, or if we want qualified teams to make these companies grow. We want to have potential markets, a lot of technology. So the majority of people of metrics of the planet can happen we can have this positive impact. So the impact to us is an additional lens, but it's a priority one. And I'm really pleased. I hope that the next time that I'm here is to talk about the investments that the Positive Ventures and Susana Nud did together. Because one of the, our main pillars is the environmental one. We find a lot of opportunities, as I have mentioned. We're talking about relevant business for this agenda. But I'd like to highlight that we that invest in a pillar related to education, health, that's related to the social issues, 
they are aligned. When we talk, for example, about a flood, who's going to suffer is the base of the pyramid. When I talk about the bill for energy, so when we have an uh, environmental impact, we have a social impact. And I'm really following this, and I'm really pleased to see that this equation of looking to these macro trends that are so neat, uh, qualified team, scalable solutions, potential markets, they deliver a financial re return. So to me, it's an amazing cycle. If you want, who doesn't want to invest, have return, and be part of creating a legacy for a better world? Here to share with you, Two examples of clean techs. One is El Reciclo. You have seen at her house or here packaging that has this stamp. This was created first to have a, a positive way the companies, because there's a law, there's a national policy that would make the industry to show that they are recycling at least 22% of the packagings that they put on the market. And they somehow we was created a chain. So the market evolved. We increased the rates of recycling with a startup. Today they are market leaders and they were able to build a technological platform that is scalable with a cheap solution for companies that are under the law, but are still uh, supporting an environmental cause. And now the cooperated that used to work almost as slaves because they were not paid for separating the, the garbage. Now they have a fee and they can work uh, more correctly and being paid for that. So we invested in this company in 2017. And now we have a growth for every real that we invested. It's valued 47 times. So it's an amazing case to show that it brings returns. The other company is not in Brazil. It is about uh, carbon. And we, it was an active work for this carbon issue. And it's an investment it's called Pachama. It's with uh, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, these brilliant minds that are looking at this problem. So they have an innovative work to regeneration and certify and trade out the credits. And finally, I would like to finish by saying that we do that in a coalition. The public uh, sector, the academia, the private sector have this responsibility. So I would like to congratulate Susano for this initiative and say that next time I'm back here, besides co investments, I want not to talk about impact or uh, conscious consumption. I want to talk about economy and all that, and the consciousness is implicit. Thank you, you can stay. Thank you, Andrea. It's great to hear you and know more about your experience. And you bring a lot about uh, a part of what is important of the UN Sustainable Objectives is about all that, about the economy. I hope we have that in the agenda as, too, as well. So while we organize our stage, let's continue with a panel talking about the role of the bioeconomy on ESG and our role is to approach the opportunities for corporations to support the startup ecosystems that may develop solutions and when they are proven feasible. They receive the support of large companies and they can scale and really bring solutions to these challenges that we face. So to talk a little about all that, let's call our guests. We are going to have Guy Perlmutter, who is the founder of Great Capital, and he knows a lot about the challenges of investing in scaling solutions with scientific base uh, solutions. We are also going to have Philippe Novais, the founder and director of Debater, uh, the Bakery Latin America. They help organizations to bring tangible results with different initiatives of innovation from the creation of the strategy and tactical plans until the execution of open innovation programs. And Christina Jill White, the executive director of sustainability and communication of Susano. Welcome all of you. We have one seat for me here, right? So let's get started. To start our panel, let me push it first. I would like to hear 
what you think about the main challenges. Lou mentioned a little, Andrea mentioned a little as well, but we'd like to hear your vision of what are the main challenges of society that we can address today with the support of startups and this innovation ecosystem. Andrea, can you start? <laughs> Since you're closer. I believe startups have the power of uh, questioning changing status quo. So when they look for the solution, they can bring scale, especially in the area of technology. So I believe it's hard and uh, there are challenges we can't defeat with innovation, but in Brazil and many places in the world, we have a market for the solutions. Companies want these solutions. Hunger in Africa can't be solved in a startup. Um, but in general, I'm very optimistic and there are urgent matters and markets like recycling or the carbon issue that is becoming more present and many energy. It has a negative impact and I believe there are many opportunities despite the size of the problems. I believe all great companies are innovative. You showed a lot of amazing things you are doing. You have invested in startups and all. The difference between a large company today and a startup, basically the speed and the access to capital they have. So startups bring this, this speed that I believe the world needs and uh, the world is shouting they need. And when they tackle with a clear purpose to solve solve clear problems that we all have and as it was mentioned you have impact and return on investments of course it's going to thrive there's a lot to do so i believe all startups that are here and i see new faces here i believe you are all startups but uh, I believe it's very important for startups to solve a clear problem with a focus on the future return, either a financial or environmental or a social return. The return, the value has to be clear for society, for investors, for the partners and for the ecosystem it's a part of. First off, let me thank you for the invitation and congratulate Susano for this important day in the history of the company. And I believe one element we should keep in mind when we are talking about startups and innovation, especially when we are trying to address problems of the size we are dealing here, like sustainability, energy preservation, optimization of processes, and um, reuse of natural resources. We have to think of how to improve the communication between the different sectors in society. We are in an age where the work the startups do to affect a certain niche of innovation and uh, connect it to climate tech or energy or Agritech is something that can't escape having a scientific and a technologic base that is very advanced. And this base, in general, comes from research uh, centers or universities, or reference centers. And it's important for us that are part of the inno innovation ecosystem to ask ourselves, how can we improve the communication between the elements, between academia, the private sector, the government, the NGOs, because this circle, this fluidity of uh, ideas and innovation coming from one part to the other will accelerate and really help the advances to be significant. Chris, I'd like to hear you and I would like to go back to what Guy, uh, Guy mentioned and continue on that. 
It's hard to talk about all those experts, but as professional in sustainability, I have uh, followed up what the startups bring to tackle the sustainability challenges. So there's a case in Israel that you see Let There Be Water book uh, about the startups in the partnership with uh, water uh, companies from the government are, are solving these challenges and the challenges can be in the base of the pyramid, can be uh, to solve some of the sustainable challenge goals and uh, like hunger and uh, there are some bottlenecks uh, to take food to everyone, so there are startups that can tackle these issues. You, and there are some startups that are using blockchain to give identity to refugees because it's hard to have an ID when you're changing, when you're moving from a country to another. So, blockchain can be a solution and a recycling tool uh, to recycle plastics and chemicals and carbon sequestration, the use of bacteria to capture carbon to produce other molecules. And so all of this, it, any link inside the circular and regenerative economy has a space for startups. Great. And going back to what uh, you mentioned, there is a study from the last year of Distrito talking about for a low investment environmental aspect being only 2, 2.5 percent in biotech. And you mentioned uh, DTEC, so how to connect all the dots in this ecosystem. In your vision, and it's open for everyone to complement, what are the main difficulties to connect these dots? I believe there is a challenge inside the innovation world and particularly in the deep tech, which is the world of the startups related to the scientific technologic bases where founders are PhDs and have specializations after years of study inside an university or a research center that creates intellectual properties and patents and create an interest barrier for exploring that technology, but all technologies that are stuck inside a lab or inside an academic um, article, they don't create the beneficial effects that we are mentioning this morning. So when we think about innovation of this measure, there are two types of challenges. The first one is the one of the basic research, where all innovation based on uh, science is born, because it's all tied to government funding. So there is a responsibility the governments have of investing in basic research, which doesn't have at a first sight an immediate application, but effectively is the foundation of all the technology we are going to use throughout our lives. When we look at numbers, we have a real sight of why some countries are in the leadership of this process and some are behind. Brazil, recently, in a study carried out by an institute that follows the budget for research and development in the world, Brazil invests around 1% of its GDP in science, when global average is around 2 and the countries that most invest in research and development gets to 4%. So you to have an idea between China and the US, it was around 1 trillion new dollars being invested in basic research. It's not in venture capital, it's not startups, it's research to the technical and scientific development. So this is one of the factors that need to be considered because in Brazil, we are always in the first positions of the world rankings of publications of scientific articles of academic quality between professors and students. But the outflow of this intelligence to the economy is very complex because of a series of laws and bureaucracy and processes that we still don't master. And and that takes me to the second point, which is the way you can make technology, the root technology, the one related to chemistry, physics, maths, to come out 
of the academia and go to the economy, it, it, it happens through simple and uh, smooth processes where you can create a fast track, a collaboration between government, society, NGOs and companies. So you can try from these technologies and make them become what interests us, tools to prosperity. So this is the success of a technology, when it creates prosperity to all the society. Can I add something? As you mentioned, Ki, there is a matter of communication that is very important, especially in this case between the academia and the market and great corporations. So the market, uh, when we think of what society needs and great corporations with capital, the great corporations have a role. In the US, we see it a lot. The X companies sponsoring MIT are paying for a lab, its infrastructure, so there can be more research, not only the government. Here in Brazil, it's still something that is in early days. We had that in the past, and for some reason, let's not say it just stopped, but it, the, this investment reduced from our sides, from the private uh, initiative and from the government, and now we see in the world, when we have clients in 22 countries, we see entrepreneurs that are researchers outside the country. So how can I replicate cotton in a lab? Or how can I grow cotton on a lab in the molecular level? And in this case, the Brazilians are out because they can't get resources. So they go abroad to research and want to become entrepreneur in this kind of research. It's one or the other. It works or doesn't. And if it works, will the business model stand? And it's very interesting because there is, uh, besides the corporate venture capitals, uh, in companies investing on that, when you have this researcher with the entrepreneurial mindset, in the long run, they don't just solve the problem with the molecule immediately. There is, uh, there are some artifices that outside the country, they start mentioning now in Brazil, like mini IPOs. So Chris was mentioning the Finnish company that uh, went and opened an IPO very recently. It's common for researchers and companies to start, especially in England and Canada, in different stock markets, to open mini IPOs to get the budget they need for that research to become business. And it's interesting when you can bring this business view to the research. And I think uh, this is not so strong in Brazil. And our role is to bring that message and to do what we need to do, because, you know, we have to walk the talk so we can really change the matrix of innovation in Brazil, because research and development is essential. Andrea Cris would like to comment something. No, just briefly, we always, when we work with investment, we joke that money is not immoral, it's amoral. It makes, it creates, uh, gains meaning when you apply it to something. And technology is the same. You can use technology for fake news, or you can use technology to save the planet and de decrease the social inequality. So we have more and more incentive for this positive agenda. And then we can really reduce this gap between the academia and the businesses on that. And you who are navigating from all these uh, links in the chain, what suggestions would you give to researchers, to people that are there? I hope that are many entrepreneurs and researchers and the startup team with us, listening to us online as well. So what do you suggest they do to get closer to this business world and build these bridges and talk more the business uh, language and get to fundings and access corporate venture capitals and access this universe that is not the core of what they're doing. If I can only give an example, 
you know we have a platform of open innovation that exists for 20 years. And it's not only for startups, but really to bridge the gap between research and company. So the company places a challenge that needs to be solved. And a price of how much they're going to pay for whoever solves that. So a company like Suzano has a challenge to harvest or the, for the forest, and they place a challenge, and a researcher in Australia may have the answer for eight years and couldn't have capital to start its business. So it's amazing. They can get $80,000 for something. I've published, five people read it, and uh, now this technology is going to be useful and going to be boosted. And that happens all the time. I don't know how much it happens with startups, but I believe that uh, closing this gap between researchers and the companies that have needs is great and bring amazing results. I may, I believe that are some years it works and I think it works. Going back to what Guy and Andrea mentioned, communication. A lot of entrepreneurs and some corporations, some researchers in the academias, academia, so a lot of in big companies too, they have this, sometimes they say, I'm not talking about this because this is mine, because it's a something that's a strategy, it's my technology. That's the biggest mistake. If you communicate more, because the secret of a successful startup or a successful idea or whatever is not in the idea itself, it's in the execution of that. So you can have the idea, 10 people can try to execute that idea, and just one or two or three can do that. And we have market for everyone. It's not a silver bullet. So when we talk about this, we are every day with big companies. I'm talking about mining in the morning and then blood and then trees and so on. Each company has these different industries. We are in several industries. And everyone thinks that they have unique problems, exclusive problems. No, your problem is this problem of other companies, of other countries. Everyone has the same problems. We joke that if you want, I can tell the story, but we, you say that there are seven problems in the corporate world. And six of them are in communication. Tell, tell now, tell now. No, 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 no. But that's it. I think that academia, the researchers, they are afraid of talking. So when we can solve this path, this condition, for example, it's difficult to go to university here. You have this problem. To who you talk to? It's not a person. Which department of which university is an expert in pulp? So we don't have nowadays a path. It's not clear. How I'm going to talk to the University of Sao Paulo or the University of Campinas? Which researcher? So is there a lab or not? Do they have resources or not? This should be explained and showed to us and we could be able to access. Because in the end of the day, the market, the consumers or the bioconsumers that are, I love this word, how they're going to behave and how they're going to generate wealth and are going to thrive. And I think that communication is the main point. Really good. Just to mention something, I think that to recognize your limitations is something important. Sometimes the researcher has a technical capability, maybe he have communication soft skills, but ideally they can get a co-founder, a team that will be good for him, and we appreciate these diverse teams. And not only in co-founders, but also partnership with other companies. The startups, they solve one problem, they should solve one problem. 
For example, that new bank. New bank started with a credit card, was not a bank, then became a bank. But it started doing something really well. Then to understand other things, to buy other companies or associate to other companies, to increase the portfolio, thinking of what the consumer needs. With research is the same with startups, the same if the big corporation thinks that a startup is going to solve the life of that corporation, they're wrong. This is not going to happen. Even though it's one problem, when we design the journey for this entire problem, we have hundreds of different solutions that can be startups or not. And I think that's important to say that. To save the world is not the startups. I work with startups every day. But that's in the research, in the technological part, that's not just startup are other size of companies, the medium ones, the bigger ones. We talk with the AcelerMittal, a base industry, the innovation besides the digital. Forget, it's not just an app. It's not just that. There are a number of things that need to be connected. We need the hard tech, the biotech, with the mobile, with apps and so on, one thing connected to the other. And just related to this question and go back to the source of that, that what Marcela asked, of what the entrepreneur that's in the university today, that's doing a research, that having a scientific base work, what's the part that this person can contribute? I think that we have three big elements that they can look at that this person can look at. The first thing is that in the university, in your research center, go to the board, to the technological center, and ask what is the policy of the university related to open innovation? How are we talking to the world? Do we have an office to transfer technology? If I do my doctorship and I, then I become a professor, how does this work? We have seen now, recently, some university, important universities here in Brazil trying to go into this direction. What is really difficult to our ecosystem, and this is something that all of us here, with our companies, our managers, our business, with different sizes, have tried. If you're a startup of 98 years or a recent startup, is that the environment, the legal environment, the taxation, the work laws, it is extremely complex comparing to other global economies and looking to the rankings of competitiveness, Brazil has a highlight position in the academia about size of economy, about sophistication of industries. We have great global leaders of market here in Brazil, but our legal infrastructure to make this happen, to develop, we have a lot of obstacles. Someone has something new and you try to solve that problem and you talk to five lawyers and you have eight different opinions because not even them, no, 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 I don't know about this new law, oh no, this law is not going to be used anymore. So for us that need to think about a lot of things, this is a problem in the structure. So the first thing that the entrepreneur can do is related to how they have this in the university and also to the lawmakers in the municipalities, in the states, in the federal. So we need to have a set of laws that will be good for this innovation system in Brazil. It's really difficult to start a company. It's not that difficult to end a company. It's not possible. It's impossible to do that. Forget about that. Forget about that. 200 years later, and you are going to have the company. So one of the main ecosystems, countries that that we cannot even compare regarding the economic relevancy that Brazil has, they have process of opening and ending a company that the person is there. They click three times on the mouse, they have started the company. Two clicks, they upset, they need to end the company, they end the company. So this is a second thing. And the last element. I think that is the work that the corporate ventures, that the big players that they have of closing this gap, doing what? Asking for papers, raising the hand and say, these are the challenges that we have here. I want the market, I want the people, the researchers come to me and bring some solutions. 
It's not apps. It's not hackathons to, to find the nicest way to filter a picture if it's going to be black and white or another filter. No, we're talking about structural problems that few people can address, but with resiliency, with the proper laws, with the proper teams, the correct teams, we can do that and we can move forward and make Brazil live this that instead of going to the wrong direction of this position that we have all the indicators that are favorable to create an ecosystem that are great to a position where this becomes a reality and it becomes something that's going to be prosperity for the population. That would be my next question. We talked about what the researchers, what the entrepreneurs can do. So I'd like to hear you what else the corporate venture capitals we can do as we're launching the corporate venture capital from Suzanne, what else the corporates can do to help this ecosystem go beyond about allocating capital in some companies, but to make this ecosystem more important, more, more vibrant? How can we help more? I think that just doing that, it, it, it helps because the entrepreneur can be able to test the product to be in a collaborative environment with different experts from different areas you're doing a lot, so I think that the proposal for a corporate venture is amazing. I think that's to be close, to provide support, to work resiliency with the entrepreneurs. Now, talking about the corporate, what a corporate venture capital can do, regardless of which company it is, is to not to think that's an M&A. Forget the path to control. Think as an investment. The difference between an M&A and a CVC is that M&A want to buy the cheapest as possible because you want efficiency, capillarity, any other thing. In an investment, that's what CVC does, you want your investment to increase. So when a corporate venture capital has a path to control, that we have an M&A mindset, when they invest what they want, they want to decrease value, they don't want to add value. And to add value, you need to end the egos, the internal egos that you have inside the corporation and have a type of governance that's well structured. So you can leverage your investment. You can speed up the growth of this investment. And I think to do that, it's quite important, the benchmarking, the global benchmarking, Innovation, innovation, there is no border, so we shouldn't think just about Brazil. We need to talk to everyone. We have a lot of people doing things well and things, doing things bad. So we need to understand and judge what works and what doesn't work. Again, forget how to please the boss. Boss, forget how to please the boss. It's to think how to deliver value in the edge. And the VCs are here to help this process. Because the CVC needs to learn with the VCs too. We don't need to lead investment. You can follow an investment. You can be a follower. They lead and you go and you help and you allocate capital. But you can only do that if you have the CVC purpose well structured without this M&A thinking. Uh, we can talk 40 minutes just about that. Really good. I'm trying not to ask you about the seven problems, but because we're going to the final moments of our panel, so now I would like for you to have your final remarks to bring something that we haven't discussed during this. Uh, listening to the other speakers, I think that we have two main bottlenecks in Brazil. Is the, the legal ecosystem. I think that we need to study what happens in countries with a lot of innovation and a lot of startups as the United States, Israel, and see how we can apply this here. Brazilian science isn't the same level that any other country. So why, if we have great scientists, we don't have the same level of innovation and startups that other countries have. So I need to study and remove this bottleneck and that maybe the venture capitals can play this role. I think this would be great. And on the other hand, as we get closer to the researchers and maybe have more researchers 
doing MBAs and more MBAs studying a little bit of biology, chemistry, understanding the process and how science works and bring some researchers to our companies because the scientific view, I'm talking because I'm a chemistry, so, so we need to have the scientific view. It's important. It doesn't matter which profession you have. This is my two cents. Someone else? So glad to thank you all for being here. It was great. And moving on with our next movement. Thank you. Cris, Felipe e and now to launch our Suzano Venture, I would like to invite Julio Raimundo, that's the director of the Corporate Venture Capital from Suzano. Thank you. I'd like to share with you the happiness is to Suzano and to us this day. We have talked before something that's regeneration. We mentioned this word. This is a regeneration day for Suzano. We know that the companies that are successful in long term are the ones that reinvent themselves. Suzano, every day we think about creating the future. And this regeneration that we have here today with the beginning of the Suzano venture, we want to ventures, we want to grow. So we are launching now our venture capital arm. So it starts based on three clear elements to us. The first one that was worked here by Luciana, that's the urgency. The urgency of changes in the way of producing and the way of consuming, especially related to the climate agenda. And the second element is innovation. Innovation that Susana brings in its DNA. I think that previously Susana was the company that had the eucalyptus culture that throughout decades was enhanced by researches. We have Bertolucci here, our partner responsible for a lot of these innovations throughout the decades, and that put Brazil and Suzano in a leadership, in a global leadership position. So innovation is in our blood, it's in the DNA of Suzano. But we got to the conclusion that there's a missing link, and this would be our closeness to the ecosystem with the visionaries of the bioeconomy and the global economy. That's why it is born in the venture capital of Suzano. It's a lem element of our open innovation that will allow us to collaborate. That's the word collaboration of a company of almost 100 years old that wants to reinvent with an economy that's going to be built. So our venture capital wants to potentialize these visionaries that are spread in the entire country and the entire world. The base of this transformation is the tree. We want to transform to the bioeconomy, making investments in deep tech as given mentioned here previously, Susan has investment, has knowledge, skills that we have throughout decades in this research area, closer to the scientific area than the digital base. So we had a lot in the last 20 years, especially in the venture capital because of the digital economy, but we want to invest in deep tech and from our main richness that are the planted forests, forestry. So this is the exigency and the reason of the Susano Ventures. The word that symbolize the Susano Ventures is innovability. And we like to say that it's not innovation on, your, on one side and sustainability on the other side. Susan have learned through the last years to bring sustainability to the way that we make business. I'm coming from the financial area. Now I'm the area of new business. Susan was the first company in Americas to launch the sustainable idea. Otherwise, we would have the active of financial sustainable finance. So sustainability now it's present in all, almost in all activities in the company. So we like to say that it's not just innovation on one side and sustainability on the other. It is innovability. That's the word that symbolizes Susano Ventures. 
We have done our work of positioning, taking into consideration all the skills that we have and the challenges, and where we can collaborate with this agenda through the next years. And we have a clear idea of where we can invest and we can collaborate, and we can make the economy, can we make these changes. And the four verticals that we are going to work with the startups, the eucalyptus, Eucalyptus Biomass, we want to generate new products and applications with our raw material, that's the eucalyptus. We are developing four routes here that are related to lignin, to pulp, bio oil, biocomposite, and with that we want to develop a number of applications as was the spin-off that Christian brought here in the first lecture of the day. So we want a number of spin offs So the second at sustainable packaging. We want to broaden the paper presence in our pulp of fiber, our cellulose fiber in the packaging business. We have some challenges here regarding technology, special of barriers to bring new properties, new functionalities that can allow that the paper and the cellulose fiber can replace the raw material that's fossil for a new agenda and a new economy. The third one, the third vertical is the agroforestry. Here we're talking about the agri-tech, something that in Brazil developed a lot and that Susano needs to move on. So we have here an increase of productivity and efficiency. It's from the moment that we plant the tree to the wood inside the factory. So here we are talking since the, when we begin, when we are selecting the best trees, here, it would be interesting to us to make developments in genomics, new technologies in genomics, and digitalize our forest. Huge opportunities that we have, thinking since we are planting, when we are harvesting, logistic, until the door of the factory. So we have a huge opportunity of investment here in an area that I think that Brazil will collaborate, the Brazilian startups can collaborate with us. In the last vertical, is the carbon removal. We believe and we see many elements here, like was mentioned, the investment in a billionaire company in the carbon area. Our idea is to generate value from carbon, because Susano believes the transition needs to value the removal of the carbon, and there is a series of uh, challenges that we have to tackle inside the company to improve. So today, in the company, we have a development based on carbon inventory that we have in the company connected to the properties, the rural properties we have. So this inventory process of accounting for the carbon and monitoring carbon is done manually. So now we have a so this is something we have to continue, and what's going to differentiate us? I loved the last question here, and Felipe could talk more, because the corporate venture capital and Suzano have to offer less of a resource, and of course the money is important, but people think that when they think of venture capital, the most important is the money, but it's not. We believe that many elements we bring are even more important to make a difference in this innovation ecosystem. The first is that we get to 2 billion people. The second is the intellectual capital. We have over 300 people working with research and development in four geographies in the world, Brazil, Israel, Canada and China, where we are starting our research area as well, and an infrastructure at the service of prototyping and services. So we we have uh, many hectares of uh, planted forestry, and we have 12 factories, five ports operating, dozens of uh, distribution centers. So we have all this infrastructure that can be used to test products and solutions. And the connection, because of all that, the whole clients and the connection to the financial markets, Susana operates in global financial markets, all of that is at the service of the partnerships we want to provide to startups, the visibility, Susano has a presence in different world forums, and the experience that we were able to develop over the years. 
Therefore, how are we going to invest? First off, we have 70 million of dollars that are available for the first round. We don't have a time window for the, that investment, and money is invest is important. We I want we want you to know how much we're going to invest. But the other attributes that we want to apply here is partnership and collaboration. We don't want to be the big company that really uh, just strangles this small one. We want to have a conversation with them. We want agility. We want to be fast in our discussions. Without being agile, we wouldn't create Susano Ventures because we would we already invested on in startups and, of course, the global presence. So our initial focus would be in the early stage, the companies in their first days when we can collaborate more for their the, invest, the development of the solutions. So we're going to have pre-seed, seed and uh, a series. So we are very enthusiastic in this day. It's a rebirth, a regeneration of the organization by the birth of Susano Ventures. And now I would like to share with you our manifesto, our birth certificate. I would like you to follow with us together. O mundo pede the world asks for urgent and effective changes to seeds today, a sustainable tomorrow. The new future is renewable and has people and planet in the center of all decisions. More than preserving, we have to ensure the conditions for the life to regenerate, because there is no way of thinking of evolution without having as assumption the protection of the resources, all of them. Innovation on one side and sustainability on the other is not well. It's innovability, it's all together. That's why we invest directly in the entrepreneurs of the bioeconomy, adding forces of our capital experience, technology, and access to our plantation areas and preservation areas to global markets and research to boost solutions that are deep tech. We want to strengthen the community of innovators that are brave enough to build this new future. That's why we exist, to boost solutions, to boost visionary people that have an attitude to transform and have the creative talent that together with us, they believe in the capacity of renew life based on the trees. Susano Ventures, seeding the futures. So, our child has been born, Susano Ventures, and I wish it a long life with a lot of partnership and investment. We have to be together with all of you, the entrepreneurs of our entrepreneurship partner uh, ecosystem. So, I would like to call now, well, before, let me show you our references. We already have our web page, and our manifesto has just been being posted on our LinkedIn page, so if you want to keep up, please follow us. And on the QR code, you can get directly to our page, and at the end, you are going to receive a gift, a reminder of uh, this day of the birth of Susano Ventures, and the QR code is always is already there in the gift as well. And we learned that the space between conception, planning, and execution has to be minimal. When we planned today, we wanted not only to announce, but also give consequence to the announcement. And nothing more important than a call to action and be open to the proposals and start working with the ecosystem. We are ready and anxious to start working with this innovation ecosystem. We have a long-term partnership with Senai in the research area. And so now we are going to launch our call to action to Biosolutions, the future from the tree. And we would like to invite for announcing this partnership with Senai, the Director of Technology and Innovation of Senai, Jefferson Gomes, our partner for so long. So thank you, Jefferson.
Thank you. I took the liberty of copying the three articles and sent it to my daughter. She works with plastics in the ocean in Berlin. And she said, wow, that's great. And she really liked uh, that the idea of not having soup with a fork. So that's it. Good morning to everyone. So I'm an engineer, so I apologize because my I have a short-sighted vision as an engineer. We always have this idea of a volume and control view. So when remember, if you're an engineer, you remember we all have uh, volume and control to con to to have uh, numbers and put things in practical terms. And all of us, we feel more brotherly in our 17 points of the ODS have been reached. Do you doubt this brotherhood? Nobody does, but in practical terms, you know what it means to bring people to the consumer market because at the end of the day, we are not people or nice people, we are consumers. That's what you are called. You consume, so you are a consumer. So inside our social model, we bring to the world more consumers. In practical terms, in engineering terms, we need 50% more energy, 40% more food, and 40% more water. That's why in engineering, there is no way we have to work for this process, considering that all of our developments are based on three basic materials, metals, polymers, and ceramic. For a ceramic uh, component, you need high temperature. For plastic, you need 200 degrees Celsius. And metal, you have like uh, copper, but other materials over for uh, all of them more than 900. Because there is the passivation that needs it to transform the aluminum oxide. So this game makes the industry that is small. Our industry is not big. Our industry is responsible for 20% of the GDP, but the transformation industry is just 9% of the GDP. Unfortunately, it's not as big as it is it should be for a country like ours, because to buy a mobile phone, you need 60 bags of soy, one mobile phone. So volume and control. So for that 9% uh, of that uh, transformation industry, our Brazilian industry consumes 40% of the energy in Brazil, 27% of the water in Brazil. So when we think of uh, building products that are relatively sustainable, we say we need to understand the engineering as a fundamental of this process. And in this logic, we, the industry system 10 years ago started to realize that there is a link. I think you guys mentioned the world of the university and all that. And in this idea of uh, starting institutes together with BNDS, we started a program to generate institutes for technology and innovation. So back there with pilot plants and the Brazilian Association of Chemical Industry, we had some pilot plants. And I believe that after 10 years, we had some success because after all, it's over 5,000 1,500 projects, 800 great companies that were served besides startups, but also an interesting number, the volume of uh, capital that was raised, 2 billion reais in research projects. I think we got some success, right? Because at the end of the day, it is over 15 or 20 projects for Suzano done in their majority in our institute in Salvador called Samatec, which is one of the gems in Brazil because it has developed 
with companies, a submarine that is being tested in the North Sea to verify oil leakages of great and small companies and multinationals. The same institute works with the development of vaccines for COVID or for Zika virus or dengue. And other institutes have placed satellites in this space. These institutes work with a number of uh, biodiversity projects. And there are 89 companies installed inside these institutes with partnerships with all the regional universities. But what happens is that when we get to a number that is very interesting, after all this time, we start having in this scenario of the ODSs that I mentioned, we start having other needs and functions, as we speak. And that's what we, have, we call these uh, oriented missions. When you have a well-developed organization, we start to think, OK, so how can our institutes can translate those efforts into localization? global techniques applied locally. The different biomas, like the Amazon, the Caatinga, the Cerrado, we have the Pampa, the Atlantic Forest, we have oceans. How, what is our role as an industry system inside this environment? And if we are going to develop technology, what are the consequences of a technological development when you talk about causing movement for public policies, regulations, legislations? And if we're going to talk about new sources of energy, what is our capacity to influence the need of infrastructure? Because at the end of the day, we have a country that has the potential of 9 gigawatts of wind in the oceans in northeast from Rio Grande do Norte to Maranhão, 300 gigawatts of wind, and in the Caatinga region, 25,000 gigawatts of power of sun. And Brazil, of this 40%, Brazil needs 200 gigawatts. In Europe, a little more, 300 gigawatts. And what is our role inside the energy world? If we have uh, six bioma, what is our role in the bioeconomy? And if we have all the water, what is our role with our 40% of water? And then businesses start to exist not only for infrastructure, for legislation and regulation. We start to realize that people for deep tech is needed. And these guys in deep tech, it's not just passion. It is a coast really, really passion. So it's a very de a big depth in the knowledge. People have deep knowledge in one specific aspect. And I was in a school in Norway. They were studying eucalyptus by transforming eucalyptus into food. And it's curious that when I get there, Alessandro was with me, we found 15 Brazilian people researching that in Norway. So in this context, yes, when you work with strategic projects as mission, you have to care about developing people, relations to all the academic aspects, and the development of new business. If people are educated in deep tech in this process, new business are a means they are a means for more people to be developed. And then when you have people, the business is an end as well. So things get connected. In practical terms, we started thinking of organizing our institutes in four basic areas. Looking at Brazil, renewable energy, of course, inside our potential, circular economy, and my friend mentioned the regenerative economy, and it has to be a part of all that, of course. But if I have circular economy with everything we do here, we have energy, 
A gente precisa também. Well, we need. Tanta biomassa disponível. Because we have so much biomass, we need a bioeconomy, which is a fluffy word. What is bioeconomy? Mas enfim, tem But, the, but that's it. There are so many different things for us to put into this world, considering our potential. And if we start to work with these three pillars, of course, the carbon credit is natural. So it's not an area for us. It is a consequence. Because the other area we realized over the time that needs to exist is aerospace. Aerospace? Yeah, that's it. Aerospace, because I need sensors, I need structures that will be applied in the 4.0 industry, the 4.0 agribusiness, because one thing is satellites analyzing soy and cotton and corn in Mato Grosso, and another thing is to have a satellite analyzing high trees or in woods, and everything is a project that our institute does because we have a satellite in space and we have development in this area. And then airspace for us is a transversal Uh, aspects of the, th the other three aspects. We have oriented missions and projects, and those solutions no, told us that the great catch here is not just having people, but all the stakeholders in the chain, the venture, the academia, everyone is a stakeholder. But in the end of the day, we represent the industry. So I have to put large industries and small industries at tax and startups and mid-sized and small com companies as well, because they are there in their space. And in this context, we started to have structuring projects like this once. And in only one year, de levantamentos como esse, nós tivemos, como vocês podem ver, 87 projects that were submitted to missions. Institutes of Innovation, Partner Institutions, and an average of 13 times of the value that was investing. So one company invested something and had the result being 280 million. So you see the database of projects that we have and the trends that we have, we start realizing that. So in this logic of building business, we thought that with Susano, let's do and a project that we had a lot of people involved, like you. Let's create projects with Suzano that we can unify startups, companies, universities, ICTs. And look here, we can use these promoting agencies. Naturally, we have capital flow from other sources of encouragement laws. NP and so on, because the final object are the missions. And in this context, the partnership come at the Venture Suzano that was launched today with Suzano and Senai. And at the end of the day, we have two types of projects to be approved. These two types are really nice because one, it addresses. Do you know that old project, I have this challenge, I have this institute, I have this capital, the project is analyzed, it works, we have the technological development. It happens that there's another chance for those projects with a higher TRL that I need not only a research, that they need a pilot plant to start that, and then it's more advanced, and then we can have the venture in this line. So all the possibi existing possibilities, so you can become a business in this specific world. When we have an image like this, is the target audience that are the companies that participate, they come as an economical counterpart, and the financial counterpart. So it comes from this. So when this type of activity starts, so the business the is defined, we have a defined business model, so which are the areas to be researched, and I've told you, satellites, all of that, 4.0. This is one of the areas. Productivity in the environment as a whole is fundamental. I skipped the image here. Let's go back. So here. 
É. Mas é, tava. Faltou um aqui. Mas, tinha uma... missing. There was was... de... Foi escapada. Tem uma chamada There's específica para agronegócio. Specific one for specific one for agro-business. A outra, que é the other one that's agro-business, that basically is the technological development that connects the structures, the structures in this process. Uma outra chamada, Another is é para is for the eucalyptus biomass. Vocês, remember that I have mentioned about the case of the, the name of uh, Margaret, is her name, the professor working with food, with lignin base. So we have different products to be developed. So you, that's from a startup or a researcher that you want to launch your project, is here. You have a specific call for that. Sustainable packaging. Sustainable packaging is a complex thing, isn't it? Because maybe we need to rethink the way that we have packaging, but in practical terms, there is no question. I think that in the next seven, eight years, all the packagings will be by nature biodegradable. The so society is not going to accept a society that has seven billion people with a burning rate. Do, do you know what was 2020? Do you know what it represented? You know, right? But that was not it. 2020 was to be reminded as the first year of the history of humankind that the number of people that are above six years old is the same as the ones below five years old. This is the society that we have. So sustainable packaging is part of our daily routine. Now we have the agroforestry. forestry it was different my presentation, that was the digital forest management. This is a specific point about development that I think that's fundamental to me measure the temperature, humidity, everything that Brazil is developing quite well in the last 30 years. By the way, we have a strong industry in this. And of course, uh, carbon sequestration because of the characteristics of this project as a whole. So the schedule for this is divided. This is our launching today until October 17th is the final moment to send the proposal. It's important to get this date so we don't get it wrong. We're going to have the pre-selection of startups. November 7th is the first evaluation of the proposals of project. November 18th, the structure of the portfolio done by Suzano. That's going to assess the project in December 6th. And then the final result, December 22nd. So we start the journey in 2023. So this project, as all our calls, they are coordinated by Senai because of the relationship as a tradition that we have between Suzano and Cimatec. This project is going to be coordinated by Cimatec. But remember, it's not going to be done by Cimatec, right, Leone? We have the team here. It's not just that. Cimatec will coordinate for different institutions of the entire country. That's the interesting part, for the entire country. Having said that, the only thing that I'd like to say is to thank the opportunity in a logic of building this as something collective with Suzano almost for 10 years in research projects. I would like to thank on behalf of the Senai, all the industry system, for the opportunity that you gave to us in building and using this platform. This platform that we have have moved more than 1 billion reais in project for our country. So thank you very much. So now we're going to have a Q&A session. We're going to get the questions, uh, the people that are at home or in the office working, 
watching us as you from the audience you can send questions to us I will get them here and we ask Roberto would like to call here to come to the session Fernando Bertolucci that's our executive director of technology tech and innovation I have mentioned his name during the speech in the launching of Susano Ventures he's one of the authorities in the world I would say in the development of deep tech don't say that because they will not believe in the other things that you have mentioned and deep tech and eucalyptus biomass so a lot of our technological advancements innovations we have done throughout the decades he's part of that and the team that he's the leader three more than 300 people they have PhDs and master degrees and different research research centers through the world. So we are receiving now the questions and I will check it here and ask them. I forgot my glasses, so it's a little bit difficult. They gave me a tablet. We don't want to believe that we are over 50 years old. So I would like to ask a question to Bertolucci. Sometimes the culture of a research center and the startup culture are two things that we will think that water and oil. I would like to hear your perspective of someone that works with that, that we are the leader of a research and development center. You know the startup lives too, you have to create us with the spin of us. So I would like to know this challenge about these challenges. Thank you, Julio. Good morning, everyone. First of all, everything that he said about me is not like that. The other things that you mentioned about Susan Venture is true, the other part is true. It's a pleasure to be here, a really special day for Suzano. And Julio, you mentioned something that's quite relevant. A lot of the times, the great challenge is not about the technological part, even in deep tech. Sometimes it's the cultural challenge. We only can build real partnerships if we know how we, ha we can put startups, research center, and the big corporations is where it's born what we can transform things. So we need to transform this and from this partnership is that we can have the great transformations. I mentioned the challenge that where's Philip? I'm not seeing him. Philippe mentioned about saying that we don't have this m &A approach, and it was like that when we spin off. This was a great experience because if we had started with Spinova with the idea of buying the company, the first thing would be to remove the founders. The founders are there till now, and they are taking the technology, the tech part to become a big business that was showed the IPO that and it was really successful. The idea is to build together, and this is to break barriers, cultural barriers. What is a cha a big challenge, but I think that we're doing this in a good way, Susan. We are humble of learning from the startups. I was four years in Spinova and I have learned a lot handling them on our daily basis. So what we start today is going to give an opportunity to learn even faster. And we know how to do a lot of things. We have the 300 scientists and so on. But we have a lot to learn about agility and handle better with the uncertainty. This is the great challenge for the big corporations to handle with the uncertainties. We make them, we make them be a risk, but that's different. The uncertainty is part of that. So sometimes the startup can be better than us and this cultural learning that's going to take us beyond. You see, as we have a partner, director of technology, as Bertolucci, because he made a, a love declaration to the Susano Ventures, I would say. And I would like to say that, Fernando, since the beginning of our process was of one of the main characters, so a question to Jefferson, a practical question. How are you going to select the projects, the competition, how is it going to work? Who select the projects is Suzano. With you guys, yes, but because it's business, uh, it's true. Sometimes uh, we need to see the, the business that adjusts to the interest of the corporation. This is our experience. Our experience in all these situations that we have is to bring an ad hoc group to assess the projects so it can be exempt of any bias, local bias, specific bias. 
for that institution, but obviously, in the end of the day, it's the corporation that's going to define that. There's no question. There's a question that I will ask to myself. It's easy, I think, that I can answer. A company that already has investments can send the papers to be part of a partnership, yes, that, uh, that was easy, that's why I answered. Of course, that the company can send the papers. Do you have questions in the audience? Is that true? If someone wants to ask a question, you can ask for the microphone and you can ask your question. Can I mention a consequence? I think the consequence is really good because this is just a kickoff. It's just the first spark of that. The projects are approved, and this, oh, these are the approved projects. In the energy part that we are talking about, there was a proposal for an energy company, and this energy company approved six projects. So that six projects is not enough. Yes, but in the end of the day, for renewable energies and green hydrogen. So one of the regions that was the city of Recife, the swap port said, can't we put this topic there? Couldn't you get all these projects that are being done in Brazil there in the swap port? Oh, that's interesting. Good, good. We have talked to the companies. But then there was another thing. The suppliers of this energy company said, I'm interested in this type of this project because I, re I want to participate. They were not there. And now, before yesterday, we were talking to Brazilian companies of small and medium size that's not for the specific area, but they can install green hydrogen. So they make cars, they have the engine block, and they want to work with hydrogen with this system with another Brazilian company that's trying to create the same things. You see, that's the consequence. I think that these projects will be approved, and then you're going to have a workflow that comes from the experience of these projects. There's another one that I will answer, that is, we are participating of the mentorship program of Suzano. Great to mention our mentorship, internal mentorship program. If we prove the value for the company, is there the possibility to, of receiving the support from Susan Ventures? Yes. I would invite you to present the project, of course. It's not that we're not going to help, of course. If you prove the value, and obviously we want to follow your work, we will analyze the possibility of making the investment. There's a question here for Jefferson that's more details about how the mission will work. I'd like to know how we present our project to the participants of the event. Is there a pre-selection or is it going to be the presentation of a proved project? Thank you for clarifying. We have an amazing project that I would like to present. Oh, that's nice. But there's a platform, right, Roberto? A digital platform that you send this project in this structure. I'd like to add something about this. I think that you should talk a little bit about the scope of the platform if it's possible. We have the website that's indicated by Suzano that was presented previously that's going to have the entrance of the project and the innovation platform that we have the entire part of the project, the details, the platform leads for this building of the project so we can track that and Suzano in the end of the can check and approve the project. Hi, my name is Carlos. I'm from Gerabytes. I work with imaging detection using neural network. So it's a generic work and can be part of any solution that uses images of cameras. So I'd like to know how we can find what are the problems that we have inside Suzano that can work with that. We have the recognition, recognition of some parts of the eucalypts for you, and I know that you have the problems about the, the leaves are breaking, we need to make holes in the leaves, or we have mass accumulation. Is there someone that we could talk to to know about the pro problem, to try to produce the project for the solution? 
Thank you for your question. Of course, I think that one of the goals of our of this channel. I think that we are going to discuss more about this. We are going to have this page for the script to be subscribe to the project, so we can have this kind of discussion. Everything that's related to imaging is we are really interested in that because if we work in a high scale, in a big scale, maybe a lot of you don't know, but we are planting 800,000 trees a day. So anything that we can do, if you can see what's happening, understand what's happening in the forestry, I usually say that we talk about the bioeconomy, about the bioproducts. We forget that the bio component of this we need to to grow that. So this challenge, we need imaging, we need soil regeneration, we need to take care of the genetic material. So through this channel that's created here, certainly we'd like to know more of what you're doing, your team is doing, so we can check if there is a connection of what you're doing and you can offer. I will tell you, imaging is always important because of the scale that we work. Is there any other question from the audience? Yes. Valdir from Engineering School from the University of Sao Paulo. I have a question and a suggestion. As Roberto mentioned and Fernando mentioned and also the panel discussed this about the challenge of communication with universities and the need to change the mindset about this communication between the players. The proposal, it seems that it's related to the startup area, and it was discussed about the university and the researcher that's an entrepreneur. But for this mission, this, what do you expect the participation of the researchers that are in the university? Individual proposals, or it needs to be associ associated to a startup? And the suggestion is that, for example, some call for some papers, some European countries as German, they have some specific challenges, but in the platform, they create an opportunity channel where, for example, oh, I'm trying to get a partner or I'm interested in a partner because sometimes a startup needs something, some specific, and they don't know where to find because we don't have a database. So let's assume I need someone with an expert in nanocomposite or renewable material. Or on the other side, I have this expertise and I put there. So a database saying I'm trying to find someone with this expertise or someone that has this expertise and it's available there explaining about that, so because maybe can favorable this connection between the parts. Let me just uh, start and then I will pass to the others. It may seem that the project has to involve a startup, and that is not the case, okay? I asked them to show an image because we have two ways we are expecting to support. One involving Susano Ventures, where we have the participation of a startup, and another that is not. And the beauty of this uh, call that we have here is that it we can have have corporate venture capital as Susano Ventures for supporting startups because it's a business plan and it's a way of supporting it, but not necessarily does it involve Susano Ventures. Maybe you can talk a little more about the rest of it. So the fact is that what we have realized in all the calls to action that we have and calls to paper, it's a great amount, but we realize that sometimes the client, the partner, or whoever is participating on that action has a predisposition for a certain kind of project. But naturally, there are some externality. Naturally, you're going to get into projects that uh, you observe that they don't have so well defined knowledge and you need a lab that is related 
to the scientific development more than the technological development. So, as I mentioned, you have two types of project. The one that is the A1, that it's the it's specific to a specific technique to be developed and it's interesting for the corporation, and projects that involve startups and has all this idea. But I'll tell you, the in practical terms that over the time we have externalities for basic research and not application. And just to complement, I mentioned something that Guy uh, said before, the nature of our business go through deep tech. So we don't start the work with a startup in most of the cases. In the majority of the cases, we have to get closer to see the train uh, centers and uh, start something that will start there and will become a startup in the end. So let's not lose that of sight because the nature of what we do demands that kind of partnership and that's where we have to walk towards. We have one more question for Fernando and then we will conclude. And the question is, it was mentioned that Suzano has research and development centers in other regions, in other geographies. So in practice, how do you see the support and the participation of these development centers in other places and working with deep techs in this kind of calls and uh, the interactions with the startups and the projects here. Great question, Julio. Today we have six research centers, four in Brazil, one in Canada and one in Israel. And now we are adding another one that we are calling the Innovability Hub in China. So soon we are going to have seven centers dedicated to developing base deep tech uh, projects. And so when we start the alliances, and these uh, relationships, I prefer relationship than, par uh, than partnership. And with those channels with Susan Ventures and uh, Senai, when we find these relationships, the idea is for our labs to be at the service of that relationship. So we can have everything in terms of pilot plant, demonstration plant, labs at the service of this development, because that is when we can multiply all that. You see the clear verticals we have, and they are complementary, and they have to multiply what we do. So we are not going to separate Susano labs with the ones we can find abroad, but really work together. And just, I would like to highlight something that uh, has to do with uh, Susano Ventures and the projects that we arrived to us. And uh, we have a strong partnership with uh, the technology and innovation uh, front and our business front. So our business leadership in pulp, paper, packaging and supply. There is a whole relationship with the supplies that are part of it and we want to receive projects related to our suppliers and the services we consume, they are all very important. So besides the labs in that offer we had presented, this is an important element that qualifies us for the development. So that's it. I would like to call Fernando Bertolucci for the conclusion, the final words to conclude our event of the day. So thank you, Jefferson, for the 10-year-old uh, partnership. And I'm glad to have you here in the launch of Susana Ventures. We plan, conceive and execute, and it was possible because of this long-term and successful partnership we have with Senai. Congratulations for your work. Work. It's not known for many people, but Brazil has so many institutes that are led by you and they have improved and qualified the innovation system in Brazil. Congratulations for your work and thank you for the partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Jefferson, Julio. 
Right now, I would like you to know that, of course, I have this honorable mission of concluding this event, but I would like you to right now see the many people that worked for this seed, and we talk a lot about that in Susana, this seed to become a tree, and it is the work of many people, so I'm just the messenger conveying the work of so many people and as said it's just a seed and we want it to be to grow and go further it's a day of celebration for Suzano and for the Brazilian ecosystem of innovation and I would just like to go back to what Luciana and Andrea said in the beginning because we can't forget this aspect that we can't be more delighted with the net than the sea. So we have all this industrial mission, the research center. This is the net. The sea is something else, and we are facing a war. The climate war is a serious situation. And according uh, as Andrea mentioned, people are not uh, still aware of that. They are not awake for that. And that's very dangerous. It's impressive how we react to an awful war as what happens in Ukraine. Very quickly, the world mobilizes. But we are going through a different war and we are not reacting to it. So our ESG call two months ago, there was a question at the end of the panel that was said, what uh, keeps you awake at night? And this is it for me. The, it's the war, this war because we live in an island and so far we can't go to a different island, maybe in the future, but right now we can't. So I think this is what we have to bear in mind. The party is super good and all that, but where do we want to get from that? And I will remember the goals that we have, the responsibility of calling commitment to renew life. And when we define the commitment of up to 2030 to offer 10 million tons of products that are from renewable sources to replace a fossil uh, based products until 2025, remove 40 million tons of CO2 of the atmosphere, remove 200,000 people of the poverty line to offer them a more dignifying life and connect half a million of actors of uh, prioritary areas to protect um, the biodiversity. This is not just figures, this is deep tech. The solutions are not ready and we are not going to get there. And I'm going to just say uh, we are not going to get there being just Susan, for, give me for the just, but that's it. We have to go beyond and we have to, we, and we need a network of a global network because we, we realize we have our a size and we have a responsibility. And this is something I tell everyone. It's the time for us to create alliances, create relationships that make sense, long lasting constructive relationship for a better planet. And of course, we want to generate better results for our Susano and great if we do it, but we can't stop at that. We have to go beyond that. We need best results, not only for Susano, but for the whole society. This is the challenge we are uh, ready to do in this uh, new idea. And we need people to work with us in this war, with this commitment to renew life that are not incremental. They are just, they're really to shake the system and impact a society, a planet, which is an island. And we are heading at an irreversible situation. So it, there's still time if each company, if each individual, each ICT, each startup assumes here their responsibility, we are going to get there. So it's a time of party and another, a moment of call to action for this change we have to carry out. And together we can go further. All these commitments to life I mentioned, maybe they will be smaller in the future. So that's what we have to do. The world needs that. And now I would invite you all, since we talked about war, let's uh, have an analogy. Susano Ventures is our uh, missile for 
causing good in the planet. So we have so many cities and startups in the world, and this missile may change and we can win the climate war that is affecting everyone. I think this is the main challenge we are facing. So I would like to invite you all to launch this missile for good and ask you all for the applause for us to boost this missile much further and to cause the transformation that we need and deserve. We can aim at anything less than a planet that is cleaner environmentally and a fairer society. We can't wait for anything less than that. So five, four, three, two, one.